We can be turning the book of Jeremiah this morning. Jeremiah chapter 9. I'd like to look at verses 23 and 24. Jeremiah 9, verse 23. Here the prophet records for us, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glories glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Amen. Well, I'd like for us to think a little bit about what we glory in and what we boast in today. Right. Let's go Lord in prayer before we begin. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this privilege and opportunity to stand before the people today, Lord. To pray that you might speak to us through that word, Lord. You might get all the glory and honor out of what is said today, Lord. That saints might be edified in the name of Christ might be lifted up. I want to thank you for your goodness and faithfulness towards us, Lord. I pray that we might give all the glory and honor to thee, Lord. Truly thou art worthy. I want to thank you for my salvation for the sacrifice of Christ that's made it possible, Lord. Yes, Lord. And then, name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, here it says, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. He is the mighty man, glory in his might, but not the rich man glory in his riches. But the glory means to praise or boast that can also go along with rejoicing. Here the Lord says, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Not let the most skillful and knowledgeable glory in that they have that skill and knowledge. Let not the mighty or the strong man, but let him glory in his strength, he says, or the rich man in his riches. Man is prone to glory about himself, isn't he? Boast about what he has done, what he can do, what he has. Right. The modern day thinking is look at me. Mm -hmm. But for the child of God, it should be look at God, shouldn't it? Amen. Really, if we were to be honest, all things come from God anyway, don't you? That's it. Yeah. So, a few places that testify that is 1 Chronicles 29 14. <coughs> David is speaking here. First Chronicles 29. He says, But who am I? And what it is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly unto this sword? For all things come of thee, and of thy own have we given thee. See, David realized that what he had, what Israel had, was from the hand of God. Amen. Yeah. And really, anything they could offer back to God was really God's to begin with. Amen. Right. And really, it's no, no different for us today. Whatever we have been blessed with is because God was gracious to us. That's why if we have wisdom, let's thank God for it, not boast about it. Amen. If we have strength or riches, let's Give God the glory for it instead of boasting about it. You know, even the wicked of this world only have what they have because God is, like I say, it allows them to. Amen. But they don't realize that, do they? They want to say, I've worked hard to get all this stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Right? You know, there was a one that Christ talked about was like that. Right. God called him fool, didn't he? That's it. Thou fool, night that soul should be required to thee. Mm -hmm. so let's not glory in what we have, whatever it may be that God has blessed us with, whatever it may be that we can do for him. Rather, we should give all glory and honor back to him. Amen. As I said before, we ought to say a little of what we do for God, much of what he has done for us. You know, if your brother Junior is joking about making a 
Message on Sunday school teachers. <laughs> so I'll have one point for you then, brother. <laughs> you don't glory if you're a Sunday school teacher. We'd rather give God the glory for you. Amen. 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 Well, Larry, we can't glory that we're a preacher. Rather, we ought to give God the glory for it. Amen. So that you pointed out, and I pointed out before, he was able to use a donkey to deliver his message before. Very good. So he says, let, verse 24, let him that glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise in loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. From these things I delight, saith the Lord. Notice what he says us to glory in is that we understand and know God, that we know Jehovah, that's what the Lord here means. Amen. And understanding and knowing are not the same thing, are they? Right. You know, to know him means more than just know about him. So to know him personally, do we truly know God? A lot of people know about him, don't they? They've heard of him, they say they believe in him. In Titus 1.16 speaks to those who profess they know God, but then works they deny him. Right. So do you truly know God? If you do, we glory in that. Amen. I said not that you know about him or have heard of him. I say most people know of, of the man named Jesus Christ. <coughs> most don't know him personally, do they? Right. Then he says, but also that he understandeth and knoweth me. The understanding is to know who he really is. Mm -hmm. Most people don't understand who God is, they do they? You're right. Well, they think they know God, and that they've, they've been sold this lie that God is just sitting up there wringing his hand waiting for you to make some decision or to do something. But our God, the God of the Bible, he's in control of all things, isn't he? Amen. Yeah. He's the one who saves who he will and hardens who he will. That's it. You know, the God of the Bible, he is the Almighty, the really the ruler and creator of all creation. Oh, how out of glory now we know that about him. Amen. But most people, they don't, do they? Most people know nothing they of a sovereign God. That's it. Oftentimes because they don't want to. That's it. But oh, how great God is besides just the sovereignty of me. That's just one aspect of him. He says here, he is the Lord which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. So certainly he's, he's a sovereign God, but he's also a merciful and gracious God, isn't he? Amen. I say loving kindness, that also means mercy, how it's often translated, or goodness. As I mentioned, he had mercy on whom he will. Romans teaches that very clearly. Amen. And yet some still say, well, you have to accept it. No, it says he has it on whom he will. That's it. And whom he will, he hardens it. And when he goes on to say, but it's not him that will it, nor him that runs, but of God that showeth mercy. Amen. We could spend a lot of time on mercy. I was studying mercy here a few weeks ago. I preached up with Julian and found that the Bible talks about mercy twice as much as it does grace. Hmm. We don't talk about it near as much as God's people. Right. But we use the God of mercy and that we would cry out for him for mercy means shows that we have no Really helping ourselves. That's it. Give the God of mercy or loving kindness and of judgment. You know, judgment can be favorable or unfavorable, can it? It can be against us or for us. Amen. So the child of God is in our favor. Isn't it? Like Christ has been judged on our behalf, that one will stand before him and yes, give an account. For the deeds done the body, we will not stand condemned before him. Amen. Oh, but for those who die in their sins, how they will have judgment against them. You're right. <coughs> Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. So all that were not written in the land of the book of life will be cast in the lake of fire, as scripture says. 
Amen. God is a God of judgment, both, going both ways. Yep. Amen. Amen. Most people that don't like to talk about that aspect of God, they just want a God who loves and tolerates everything, don't they? That's it. He would never throw anybody in hell. That's not what Christ himself said. That's it. He said, fear him, which after he has killed you, have power to cast into hell. Amen. You're right. So then he goes on to say that he exercises his loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. So that God is righteous is that he is pure and right, but he is without sin. So really, Man cannot be righteous, can he? That's it. God is the ultimate standard for righteousness. And yet, I reckon that's the reason man wants to get rid of God, so they yeah. can make their own standard. Amen. Amen. You're right. So really, what God says is right is right. What God says is wrong is wrong. Amen. Whether it's popular opinion or not. And certainly it's not the not very popular preaching today is the truth of the Word of God. Amen. Yeah. We live in a society that really rejoices in wickedness, don't they? It's and abortions and sodomy and all other things that go along with those. So we ought not to rejoice in anything but God. Amen. You know, besides the fact that sodomy is wicked, when they talk about this gay pride, mm. God has no no pleasure in any type of pride, does he? That's it. Whether it's gay pride, straight pride, white pride, or even Baptist pride. Right, you yeah, right. That Amen. does exist. So, our pride, our boasting, ought to be in God. Amen. Let him that glory glory in this that he understands and knoweth me. Well, if you don't know God today, you certainly are hopeless in yourselves, aren't you? You're, there's nothing in you that is worthy of boasting of. Let's go over to Luke chapter 10. Christ pre preached a similar message. Luke chapter 10, verse number 17. Here at the beginning of the chapter, Christ had sent out the 70. And here they came back to him. Verse 17, it says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I have beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Mm -hmm. He wasn't surprised that the devils were subject to his name. He had right. saw Satan fall himself. He was right there at the throne of God when it happened. Amen. Verse number 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Let's notice verse number 20, though. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Well, that's what we ought to glory in. That our names are written in heaven. Not that we can do this or that we can do that. But we might be able to preach great messages. Right. We might be able to sing. That we might be able to teach. We might be able to write whatever it may be that our God has gifted us with. What we ought to rejoice in or glory in is that we've been saved. Amen. Because your names are written in heaven. If you can be sure they're written there, they're, you're good to go. Amen. But they, these 70 here, they, they were happy, they were rejoicing, they were glorying, if you will, that the devils were subject to the name of Christ. And they said, don't, you know, don't be happy about that. You know, those that trust in him, that trust in the things they do, 
Well, they're often disappointed, aren't they? Yep. If we trust in Him, we won't be disappointed. Amen. In fact, I'm reminded over in Matthew chapter 7 for those that said, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and thy name cast out devils and thy name done many wonderful works? And then a lot of say unto him, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Amen. Right. We should never trust in what the abilities we have. Mm -hmm. said they had those in Matthew 7 have the same ability as even 70 did here to cast out devils, and yet they were never truly born again to begin with. And so, you know, God can use what He wills to accomplish His purpose, even lost and wicked men. Amen. Well, I'd say oftentimes He uses them to accomplish His purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That doesn't mean He's they've been born again. Right. Well, Pharaoh. Was for a purpose. Right. As much as I dislike Obama, he certainly had his purpose and plan of God's will. Right. Amen. So simply let us trust in God and glory in Him rather than what we can do or the abilities that we have. Yeah. Well, I mentioned about a preached on mercy back at Julian a couple weeks ago. In Luke chapter 18, where I took my text from, about the two that went up to pray. For the one, he's. What do you pray there in Luke 18? Verse 11, it says, The Pharisee stood and prayed thus to himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as the other men are, sorcerers, unjust, adulterers, or even of this publican. I fast twice in a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. He was glorying in what he right. was and what he had done. Right. Yeah. He was really very proud of wasn't he? Well, thank you, God, that I'm not a Methodist, or I'm not <laughs> Armenian, or I'm not this, or I'm not that. And we act like that today oftentimes, don't we? Yep, you're right. Yeah. Well, we ought to say, it's thanks be to God. That's it. The Republican, he, he saw himself for what he was, and said, God, be merciful to me a sinner. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians. Look at a few places in 1 Corinthians. We end in chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 26 of 1 Corinthians. Your Paul records for us, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not Many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the mighty, or the things which are mighty. And base things of the world, and things which are despised, have God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to not things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Amen. And according as it is written, he that glories, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. God oftentimes chooses that which is rejected of men, doesn't he? Yeah. In fact, Mark 8 31 speaks of Christ himself, that he was rejected of men. Right? No. It says he chose the foolish things, the weak things, the base things, things which are not things which are despised. And the key is in verse 29 that no flesh of glory is present. Amen. With that, God will get all the glory out and honor out of it. If you can be sure a man can boast about it, he will boast about it. Verse 31 seems to be a reference back to our text. He that glories, let him glory in the Lord. There's really nothing, nothing more that we should glory in, is it? Amen. Yeah. When we see ourselves for who we are and God for who He is, we would see that we have no room for boasting. Amen. Go over to chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. This is 
I definitely don't, I don't know that I have a favorite verse in particular, but this would be towards the top. Verse number 10, 1 Corinthians 15 says, But by the grace of God I am what I am. Amen. As grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labor more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So this verse is really the key to why there should be no, no boasting in this. No room to be proud. Amen. Because it's simply by the grace of God that we are what we are. Yeah. If it was not for the grace of God, we would be just as wicked as the most wicked of men. That's it. Amen. And we tend to forget that from time to time. It seems like, like I said, there's people that they're proud to be a Baptist, aren't they? Mm. They're proud to be a Christian. They're proud to be a, a sovereign gracer. They're proud to be this or that. But we forget that it's simply the grace of God which causes us to differ. That's it. Notice he says here, And his grace which bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Can we say that the grace of God was not bestowed upon us in vain? Are we laboring more abundantly? The fact that God was gracious to us ought to be a reason to that we would labor abundantly. He didn't have to bestow the grace upon us. You're right. Well, we weren't deserving of it, certainly. Let's go back to chapter 10 for a moment. You can have the same thought here. Chapter 10, verse 31. It says, Whether you, therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Oh, how we ought to, no matter what we do, we ought to desire to bring the glory to God, not to ourselves. Well, I think it was reading a quote from Reagan recently that said, You can do a lot of good things if you don't worry about who gets the credit. It matters. Yeah. The man wants to get the credit, doesn't he? Yeah. He wants to do these charitable acts, these good things, and then say, Look at me and what I've done. But I don't like to uh, wipe my ties off on my taxes because uh, the scripture says we ought to do it for the glory of God, not for any of our own profit. Mm -hmm. right. You can do it however you want to. I guess that's between you and God. But many of these little rich people, that's what they do. And they give it all these charities that they can write off. They don't do it for the glory of God, but they do it for their own benefit. That's how man often does. He puts on a show that he's doing all this good. But really, he's just doing it for his own benefit of some sort of way. Christ said when he did alms, don't let your right hand know what your left hand do it. Amen. When we seek to give God all the glory, we can do a lot more than when we try to Get all the credit for it. Amen. We'd be a lot more useful in the service of God if we weren't trying to take credit for the things that we do. Mm -hmm. The Revelation 4 and 11 tells us that He is worthy to receive glory and honor and power. For by Him all things were created for His pleasure, they are and were created. Amen. And God. Well, he made all this for his glory, didn't he? Good. Satan tried to steal that glory at one point. See what happened to him. Right. Man often tries to try to take the glory just the same. Yeah. Oh, how we ought to do all for the glory of God, not for the glory of self. The prophets in the Old Testament, they didn't seek their own glory, did they? They were oftentimes rejected. By his, their own families, their own countrymen, right? But well, certainly their reward in heaven is much greater today than if they had sought to please the crowd. You know, I, I remember a particular king, I can't remember who it was. You know, he said, well, Don't give me that prophet, he doesn't tell me things I like. Hmm. He said, Go give me this other prophet. Right. That's the way man likes to do it. They don't like to. 
And like they said, there's someone that'll preach to them smooth things, as the scripture says. That's it. So we as his people ought to simply be faithful to do what he has called us to do. <coughs> Seeking to bring all the glory and honor to him. Amen. Let's go to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6 and verse 14. Paul says, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world was crucified to me and I unto the world. Do we really have anything else to, to glory in today than the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ? That's good. Yeah. And no, we didn't mean the crucifix. <laughs> right. Well, like Christ died for us, that he paid for our sin. Without that, we would be hopeless, wouldn't we? Without that, we would be nothing. We would, You're right. Without the cross of Christ, we would, all of us would still be out in our sins, wouldn't we? Amen. Not, we would be seeking to fill the lust and desires of the flesh, and certainly on our way to eternity in a lake of fire. Mm-hmm. We didn't wake up one day and say, All right, I think I'll follow God today. Mm. We didn't wake up one day and say, I think I'll be born again. Right. In fact, if it wasn't for the cross, we wouldn't even have those opportunities, if you will. We did. We have no reason to boast in ourselves. We're rather, we're going to give glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, for those that aren't Saved here among us, you have nothing in yourself to glory of outside of Christ. <coughs> no good works, those aren't enough to, to save, they're certainly not enough to boast about. Right. No church membership or family connection, those aren't good enough either. Oh, so let us glory the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. Amen. <coughs> Let's go to a couple more places. Ephesians chapter 2. I was probably thinking I can't preach without going to Ephesians 2. Mm -hmm. I do like that chapter quite a bit. Verse 8 and 9, probably another one of my favorite scriptures. says, For by the grace of God are you, by the, excuse me. Verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. So even salvation itself is nothing we can boast about, is it? Right. But it's completely of God. Like I've, I know I've said before, if it was something that we did, we would boast about. It. That's it. If we had to be good enough, or we had to make the right decision, or if we had to accept them into our heart, as some say, we would boast about it. Oh, yeah, I let Jesus into my heart. Oh, yeah, I did all these good works. In fact, that's how. Those was in Matthew 7, more or less. He said, mm -hmm. I've done all these good works, Lord. Good works aren't enough, though, are they? Amen, that's right. Simply, by the, great, by the grace of God, we're saved through faith. Once again, that he might receive all the glory and honor. You know, it's there, it's a gift of God, he says. I don't understand these people who say, you have to give to God, God just puts it out there, and you've got to accept it. I didn't think that's how a gift works, but maybe I'm wrong. You're right. Yeah. So we're in Romans chapter 3, thinking on the same thought here. Verse 27. Paul has been talking about justification through the law, and how really it's not possible. Verse 27, he says, Where is boasting then? Is excluded by what law? The works, name by the law of faith. Amen. And verse 28 says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Boasting and faith excludes boasting, doesn't it? That's it. Because as we saw back in Ephesians 2 with the gift of God. But since it's the gift of God, we have no reason to to boast about it or be proud about it. 
Brother, once again, we ought to give the glory back to God that He would bestow such a gift upon us. That's it. Amen. One place when it's in Hebrews says, All men have not faith. You know, we, man tries to take that and give it to, take that away from God and give it to man. But, or you just have to believe. And certainly, man has to believe. Mm-hmm. But man can't believe separate apart from God. You're right. Amen. Where is boasting? And it is excluded. We should have no room for boasting as God's people. Seeing that even at the very foundation, our salvation begins with God. And every gift we receive is from God. Every breath that we take is from God. Amen. You're right. I think Acts 17, 28 says, in, in Him we move and live and have our being. Even the wicked are oftentimes blessed of God. Mm-hmm. Yet they try to take the credit for it. That's it. I'll give us one more place to think on before we close. Second Corinthians chapter 12. No doubt a familiar passage. In verse number 9, I'm sure... We know Paul, speaking of this thorn of flesh that he had, he called it the messenger of Satan. He said he sought the Lord three times that it would depart from him. In verse number nine, the Lord replied to him, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities of the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. Well, that's contrary to man's logic, isn't it? Yep. That we would rejoice in infirmities and feeblenesses and weaknesses. We said the power of Christ may rest upon them. You know, I've heard something like this before. With God, we have to become fools, become wise, weak, become strong, the poor to become rich. That's exactly what Paul says here, that he next verse he says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. See, it's not about us, is it? We oftentimes try to make it about us. But it's really about God. It's not about what strength we have or weakness we have. It's really not about what abilities we have and what or non-abilities that we don't have. So we ought to give all the glory and praise and honor back to Him. Amen. Seeking to bring really the glory to Him in everything that we do. In fact, over there in the Gospels, Christ said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. He didn't say, Glorify you, did He? He said, Glorify your Father which is in heaven. All right. Said man wants to do these quote unquote good works to be seen of man. That's it. So, the child of God, we ought to do them to bring glory and honor to Him. So it's, it's not about us, it's not about Brother Larry or Brother Junior. Or, right. It's about Christ and the Lord Almighty. Amen. <coughs> when we forget that, we lose our focus on it. Yes. When we try to bring the focus on us, we really become ineffective. Right. Let him that glory is glory in the Lord. Let's close with that thought.